Nazi Ahamadike Nandikanu is a nexus. The kind of man that comes around once in a generation. A rare breed. A nexus means an important connection between the parts of a system or a group of things. A central focal point. I ask my friends who since the conception of the contraption called Nigeria, their parents and them have been seeking some sort of revolution. I ask them, if a revolution started today, how would you know there was a revolution? How would you know a revolution has started? And I hear all sorts of things, not, not even worth mentioning. But the reality is, the very revolution they've all prayed for and sought after, from them to their parents to their grandparents, is happening now. And they can't see it. I don't know what they think a revolution should be. I mean, going by their, some of the kind of answers, some of the kind of things people say, what a revolution should be like, you can tell they have no clue. Some people think if a revolution has to be planned such that not one person dies or gets hurt without even bothering to go and research the history of revolutions to see if and how many times in history that there has been such a revolution where no one died and no one got hurt. Some people think change will just be given to them because they asked for it. Another question I ask a lot of friends, family, is if Jesus Christ came back today and said he was Jesus Christ, would you believe him? What would con con convince you he, he was Jesus Christ? Because the reality is, if Jesus Christ came back today, it will not be like it was 2,000 years ago. Nobody, in fact, 2,000 years ago, no one took him seriously, let alone today. He probably will not even raise two disciples. But yet, he is Jesus Christ. It's like when the Jews themselves were waiting for the so-called Messiah. And finally, Jesus Christ turns up. They didn't believe him. They mocked him. They jeered him. They simply just refused to believe him. Because their own ideas of the revolution, this Messiah was bringing, was going to bring, was different. The Jews thought it, it, there was going to be a second coming of a King David-like figure, slaying. But Jesus Christ was the complete opposite of King David. Now in Nigeria, we seem to think that somehow this revolution to free yourself from the control of 
feudalist mindsets will somehow be bloodless. No one will die, no one will get hurt. How's that going to work? Nobody has ever given me a concrete plan for a bloodless revolution in Nigeria. So, does this mean that until we come up with such a plan, nobody should do anything? We should just sit down, continue bearing the pain, the suffering, and keep smiling. Is that what it means? As if the suffering and smiling we're doing, people are not already dying. If you die in a revolution, if you die under oppression, what's the difference? You're dead. You're dead. Where does this fear come from? It's so irrational. You're already between a rock and a hard place. There's no choice. Where does this fear come from? Listen, I do not want anybody to die more than any of these peaceful revolutionaries. But I'm a realist. I've studied the history. And <laughs> even in the most peaceful revolutions, someone gets hurt. Somebody gets hurt. If you think revolution is going to go and ask, oh, oh, uh, please stop suffering us now. You know, you know this suffering. You don't pass, don't be silly. Please take a break. If you think that's what a revolution is, then you are very naive is an understatement. A revolution is happening before your very eyes. And you all can't recognize it. All you guys can think about is castigating the great man himself. Oh, uh, he, he he ran away to London to Israel and he's he's just shouted. Uh, uh, what's he now doing in London? I mean, compare this great man who has sacrificed so much of himself and his family, fighting for your freedom, to the compare him to the very politicians. They are all scrambling to vote for. Who have looted and impoverished, disenfranchised and held you down. Namdekan is in London and that's a big crime. But when people like Lai Mohammed and Amici tell you the most ridiculous lies that 10 year old people in de de developed countries won't even buy or believe. They, they seem to still carry more credence to, to you than someone fighting for your freedom. It, it, it strikes me as a kind of jealousy that because you think you can come up with a better plan then anything less than that your peaceful revolution plan is not worth it and, and, and then you, you open your mouth and start criticizing meanwhile you have done nothing these politicians you want to go and vote for compare any of them to this great man Mazi Namdikano 
compare any of them to him. If I, I, I hear a lot of idiots claiming, oh, they're using a name, they cannot to manipulate votes and they, they've paid him. If they've paid him, why is he still talking? And why would they pay him to embarrass Nigeria to this point? Because this embarrassment is now stinking worldwide. The whole world is looking, laughing, making jokes. So-called Nigerians abroad are even ashamed now to say they are Nigerian. Everybody is claiming Ghana. And apart from him being true to his mission, calling out Nigeria, your so-called politicians themselves are an embarrassment. Look at what they've turned your country into. In a nation of alimajiris. You are if you if you think you are educated in Nigeria, especially if you went to a Nigerian school, and then with all your education, you are still clamoring for one Nigeria. Especially if you're from the south. You are nothing but a glorified Almajiri. Because upon all your education. Someone who can't even speak a straight line of English is telling you what to do. On top of that, I mean, look at Oshibanjo, a whole professor, <laughs> answering sir <laughs> to Saul without Twayek. It's like it's like me working for my houseboy. I don't get it. I don't get it. On top of making your education meaningless in the system of Nigeria and turning into an, well, to prove to you that you are nothing but a glorified Alimajiri, upon all school, someone who can't speak a straight line of English comes into your land, your ancestral land tells you what to do, takes your resources, largests on it, and then you now go begging him. Is that not how our imagery system works? Is that not how our imagery system works? The houses were taken over and then Fulani sultans and emirs installed and then they now have to go begging on their own land to these foreign Fulani emirs and sultans for pittance. And you, because you read, yeah, yeah, sitting down back down, yeah, sitting back down, laughing at them that they are limagery. When you are nothing but a glorified alimagery. And let me tell you, there's a difference between the two. Alimagery is alimagery. It's a system. You know, when I hear people casting the great man, the nexus, the this great man that has literally in his own lifetime transcended into legend. When I hear people castigating him, it it brings to my mind this this saying that. Uh, uh, Especially when I listen to their castigations. Oh, oh, why did he run to Israel? Uh, oh, uh, what was he now doing in London? Uh, oh, uh, 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 which one is Jubrin again? It, it brings to my mind this saying. Because they've missed the total point of 
the great man is saying. But what the saying that comes to my mind when I hear this these baseless, stupid castigations is <laughs> when the genius points at the moon, the fool looks at his finger. Nandi Kano is telling you that you are not free on your own land and telling you how to get your freedom. And you are busy looking at how he told you. What, what is he supposed to beg you? You are busy. Say, oh, oh, he doesn't need to abuse me. What? Because he told you you are stupid. Because the reality is you are stupid. You, you think being a glorified Alima Jury is a good thing. At least the real Alima Jury know the Alima Jury. But you, you are in denial. Sometimes, yeah? You need to tell somebody they are stupid. If not, you will never know. And let, let, let me tell you what it is. It's called tough love we all need it once in a while tough love didn't kill nobody sometimes you need to tell somebody they are stupid so that they will go away think about it step outside themselves examine the situation and hopefully make a breakthrough make a quantum leap So, it's now T minus eight days to the election. <coughs> T minus eight days to you using your hand to decide your future. The power is in your hands. Now, when I say the power is in your hands, I'm not telling you to go and vote. <coughs> because, yes, if it comes to voting, the power is in your hands if you have to choose between two candidates. But then, the power is also in your hands to choose whether to vote or not. Voting for the wrong reasons is bad. Not voting for the right reasons is the best thing you can do for yourself. Based on, based on even principle. So many other great men have come out to spell out to all of you that you are in a fraudulent contraption run by a fraudulent constitution that organizes rigged selections as elections, operating with impunity. And yet, you are all clamoring clamoring to go and use your own hand to to renew your own slavery certificate to go and sign back this fraudulent constitution back into being for another four years i thought you guys were crying over four years of worry but yet you want to go and do another one so if you've been voting, 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 and worse and worse and worse and worse leaders are coming in, how about trying something new? How about not voting? Because in an election, you have three options. The first two options are between whichever candidates. The third option is not to vote at all. If you don't agree with any of the candidates, why vote? 
it's like it's like someone asking you or it's, it's like uh kidnappers asking you all right we're going to kill you now choose one gun or poison and you're all actually <clears throat> trying to choose one you see how you see how oh god you see how stupid that is because you are going to die anyway. Do you think if you choose one, they will, the poison won't kill you or the gun won't kill you because you chose it? How about just not choosing any? Let the kidnappers do their worst. They are going to kill you anyways, whatever. Let, don't use your own hand. Or your own mouth to, to tell them what to do to you. Nigeria is 200 million people experiencing Stockholm Syndrome. Extreme Stockholm Syndrome. <clears throat> because this one, I, 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 can it be Juju? Which kind of Juju they won't do for 200 million people? It can only be Stockholm Syndrome. How can, how can soldier, great men, soldiers of freedom, like great men, like the great man himself, Mazin Namdekano, another great man, Mr. Uh, uh, Barista Tony Nadi, how can these men come out after years of sacrifice and research? And tell you that your country and the constitution that governs your country are fraudulent, fraudulently designed to enslave you and hold you down and create the mess you all see today. And you're all articulating and jubrinating. No, it's, it's like you, you, got, you don't even want to hear and then after voting, you start complaining again. Hey, this country is getting worse. Hey, oh, man, when this country go change itself? Meanwhile, you get the chance every four years. So, so, what is different about Atiku? Okay, for those who want to vote Atiku, we, we all know what we're going to get if you vote Buhari back. <laughs> it's just going to be more of the same times two times three even more killings more kidnappings more shutting people up times two with impu more impunity we all know more corruption on top because it, it, I, I can't believe jubrin went on national tv to claim that he doesn't know how they doctored ganduje's video really what? <laughs> oh God! Hey, hey, Chuku Hey, uh, he doesn't know how they doctored Ganduje's video. In other words, that the video was fake. And for those of you clamoring to vote Atiku, so which magic is Atiku going to do this time that he didn't do in his first eight years? That all the presidents, since this fraudulent constitution was imposed, haven't been able to do. Uh, he's a business. He's a business. Hold on, businessman that owns a generator import or you know, link the shares in a generator importing company. Oh, okay, okay. So I'll take do it for you. And then, if you are falling for the P2B trick, <laughs> let me just tell you, to, if you want to know the role P2B is going to play, if he becomes VP, just look at the role Oshibanjo has played. Figurehead, 
is going to be a glorified figurehead. Peter Obi will not be able to do or say shit. He's just going to be a glorified houseboy. A glorified almajiri. Simple. For any body who thinks, and this one not just to those Biafrans that are still not woken up, this one is to all so-called Nigerians, especially those in the region that have the regions that have borne the brunt of the suffering brought upon us by this government by this administration if you like yourself my advice is to boycott these elections well it's already going to happen in biafra land i know when it comes to crunch time <laughs> biafrans know what's good for them and the reality is, in Biafra land, Biafra land is already a large enough area for the international community to notice a boycott. For the rest of you, this is your best chance to get noticed. Because the world will be watching. After all this, after this so-called election, if you start complaining to the world, then is hearsay until four years next election. Anything complain you complain after this election to the international community is going to be hearsay. Cause ah, come on, but you guys just voted that guy in now. What are you complaining about again? It's going to be hearsay to the international community until the next election. I'm just complaining for your pocket after this election. Then born you to complain. Not only complain, you come this world can't do. When are you going to take control of your own destiny? When are you going to take your own destiny into your own hand? Boycotting election is a legitimate form of protest. If you don't know, it's a form of civil disobedience. And civil disobedience is legitimate. It's civil. It's civil. No one's saying carry gun. No one's saying go and scatter where they are voting. Yeah, it's just no, sit at your sit at home and don't go out and vote. In fact, in the current climate of the country today, it's in your best interest to sit at home. There is Python dance roaming everywhere. There is political thugs fighting everywhere. Why are you going to go and agree with all that by signing and renewing your own enslavement certificate for more of that to continue? Look, this is not about, oh, yeah, uh, uh, but uh, I have to vote because it's P2B, or uh, I have to vote because he's, he's my person now, Oshibanjo. Oshibanjo doesn't give a shit about you. How many Christians that have been killed has Oshibanjo even gone, visited the area, or come out and made serious statements? To try and bring his government, his administration, to order. Or is it Tunubu? <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Let me tell you something. This 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 one is for any Yoruba people out there that believe in Tinubu. Tinubu will lead you guys off the cliff. Tinubu is the worst thing that happened to Yoruba land. Even worse than Obasanjo. 
That guy will lead you guys off the cliff. Or you think, oh, Tinubu will become, pre uh, hopefully Tinubu will become president in 2023. <laughs> oh, God. First of all, <laughs> if you think <clears throat> the the sultanates, the caliphates will allow him, you are dreaming. And if you think if Tinubu becomes president, you start enjoying in Yoruba land. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, well, if you don't live in Lagos, ask Lagosians. Then that, that one, you are two times a dreamer. Lagosians that was described by Amechi as a glorified village. And the reality is, it is a glorified village. Lagos is no more than a glorified village. Well, because they'll build you uh, 18th century <laughs> 18th century rail line. You think you have train. <laughs> 18th century rail line that costs more than modern rail line built in Ethiopia. <sighs> they will build road for you finish. After building the road, they will be collecting toll for how many years? And nobody even ask. Okay. When will I go finish collecting this toll? Hmm. The word is enough for the wise. T minus eight days. In this time, it's in your interest to calm down and think about your future and your children's future. And if you know anyone else, talk to them. Tell them to, to calm down. Think about their own future, their own children's future. Think about and talk to other people about trying something new. Because what you've been doing for 58 years has not been working. When will you stop flogging a dead horse? The word is enough for the wise. The reality is, Biafra has come to stay. <laughs> it's like a genie out of a bottle. It's not going back. Even if the great man, Mazin and the Kanu, stopped agitating tomorrow, me, I will, I will continue. I will continue. And if I stopped, I know there's a thousand other Biafrans willing to step into the vacuum. Biafra is not going back. It's a new day. A new dawn. So for the rest of you in other parts of Nigeria, this is your big chance to get noticed too. After this election, international community is not going to listen to you. Because they're going to say, wait, hold on, why are you complaining? But you just voted them in. I thought you liked them. So what's the complaint now? This is your big chance. To get noticed. As much as Namdi Kanu has been campaigning for Biafra for us to boycott the election, Tony Nadi and the Lower Niger Congress has been campaigning for the other parts, for the other affected parts of Nigeria to join in the boycott. Look, we're not asking anybody to fight our battles. We're not asking anybody to fight our war. We're not trying to use anybody to save our ass. We all face the same danger. You guys might not see it because it's not on your doorstep yet.
Again, a word is enough for the wise. The power is in your hands. And the best thing you can do with your hand is keep your hand at home. Keep your hand at home and sit down. 